Now we've got to try and take this on board because Jesus is far more often betrayed with a kiss than he is by the raising of a fist. He's far more often betrayed by those who profess allegiance than by those who say they're his enemy. That's literally what happened there and then. But how does it happen today? It happens when the same basic attitudes drive denial and betrayal of Christ as they did then. The fruit of this, these things, is betraying Jesus with a kiss. What do I mean? Jesus is betrayed with a kiss when people commit to church but not to Christ. Uh, <clears throat> depends on the setting, depends on the context, but church can be cool. Church can be full of you know, warmth and bubbly and friendly and nice and all the rest of it. And there's a commitment to church because it's a nice experience, but not commitment to Christ. Commitment to church because it scratches where I itch, it does what I want, it makes me look and appear and seem to be what I want to look and appear and seem to be. And you see Judas, very committed to the prototype church of his day, the Twelve. But his commitment to Jesus falls sadly short. A church is a committed group under the leadership of Christ following him, therefore coming together under his headship and leadership. And when the church gathered around Jesus, Judas was visibly there. So committed to the group, he was the treasurer for the group. But when a woman did something beautiful for Jesus, for Jesus, not the group, not the church, when somebody did something beautiful for him, that is when he wouldn't have it any longer. Because the woman came along, do you remember, with the jal al jalabaster R, the alabaster jar of perfume, and instead of selling it and putting it in the treasury, which he was helping himself from, he said to give to the poor. She poured it on Jesus. She did something beautiful for Jesus. And he wouldn't have it. And that's when he went off and spoke to the high priests about betraying Jesus. At that point, Judas took umbrage and went out to betray Jesus to the leaders of the Jews. Her commitment to Christ himself, rather than to the institution and its coffers, is what offended Jesus. What does that tell us about Judas? It tells us he was committed to church, not to Christ. And the fruit of that is betraying Jesus with a kiss. Lord, Lord, but he's not. <clears throat> Commit to church, but not to Christ. That's a good way of betraying Jesus with a kiss. Or committing to Christ, but only in part. And I'll choose the parts. That's betraying Jesus with a kiss. It looks like you're with him. It looks like you're on side with him, of course, because look, he's doing this, this and this. But then certain areas of life he is not allowed to touch. That's really the problem. Judas had a commitment to the Saviour of sorts. It just wasn't a thorough one. Other allegiances took priority in certain sectors of Judas's life. Where certain things were concerned, yes, no doubt, Judas was simply full on. But where money was concerned and other rules were applied in other areas rather than devotion to the Saviour. If he's the Lord of your life, he's Lord of all of it. And there may be bits we don't want to let him into, but you know, if he's the Lord, he's coming in. Jesus isn't Lord of all, he isn't Lord at all. And this halfway thing, the fruit of that, is betraying Jesus with a kiss. Commit to church, not Christ. Commit to Christ, but not fully. Commit to Christ, but not to follow him. See, Jesus has said to his followers, I'll go ahead of you into Galilee and, and when I'm risen from the dead, come on there. Judas will go with, through the motions, but he's not going to go on into Galilee. He's not going to do that. 
Jesus wasn't going to put down himself to pick up with Jesus, and he wouldn't follow Jesus where the word of God led him. He'd lay down all appearance of following Jesus when it didn't suit him. And after the crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus was, Judas was not going to be following Jesus into Galilee. The fruit of this is betraying Jesus with a kiss. Yes, yes, I'm a Christian. I'd like to think I'm a Christian, but I'm not going to follow Jesus. Far too dangerous and radical. I'm not having that. I'm not going to deal with the disappointment, the frustration, the hardship that can bring. He's Lord of all. He's not Lord at all. You're following him, or you're not. Commit to church, but not Christ. Commit to Christ, but not fully. Commit to Christ, but not to follow Christ. What does that mean? Commit to Christ, but not to his people. That can happen too. See, by the time this came to be written, or this, this not written long before that, by the time this came, came to happen, by the time that Judas came to fulfill his promise to, to, the, to go off to see the high priest and all those guys in the first place, let alone fulfill his promise to them. By the time this happened, the lines were very clearly drawn. The camps were pitched, and the Jews and the Christians were in opposite camps. We see that in that section just after the clearing of the temple. You can see how opposite the camps are. Judas has been daily with the Lord, an outwardly credible disciple, but the commitment to God's people faded, and Judas switched sides. Judas wasn't committed to being with God's people. If you're, not gonna, if you're gonna commit to Christ and not gonna commit to his people, well, that ain't gonna work. Because what he's doing is he's building a people. From, from Mark chapter one onwards, he's been calling people on the basis the kingdom of God has come to repentance and faith and to being together following him. Being together following him. Get that, paint, that picture painted for you in Acts chapter two, where the, 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 the impact of the gospel on the lives of the, of the disciples is, is made very clear. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, there you go, God's people, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, the means of grace that he's given. Well, Judas isn't up for that. You can't commit to Christ without committing to his wayward and sometimes very uncool people. Why? Because the purpose of God through Christ with the gospel is to unite everything again under the headship of Christ. And he does that by starting with the church. And the fruit of thinking you can commit to Christ but not his people, the fruit of that is you end up betraying him with a kiss. You betray him with a kiss also when you commit to Christ but you won't take him at his word. You're not trusting him if you're not trusting him in his word. See, throughout this account of the Passion, Christ is driven by the fulfilment of Scripture and he explains this unwelcome stuff that's going to happen has got to happen in this way, time and again. The word of God must be fulfilled. What God has said, it must be fulfilled. And Judas doesn't and won't accept what the Bible's saying about Jesus. He's the king who's come in his kingdom, making the woman's perfume poor, the right thing to do. And the fruit of that attitude, thinking that you can commit to Christ but not trust him to take him at his word, is you end up betraying Jesus with a kiss. So the key issue here is this. Jesus is committed to fulfilling what God has said is going to happen at a price, at a big price. And he does that as one who's trusting God and trusting his word, and he does it therefore with a cool, calm temperament and disposition. But still there are those who will betray him with a kiss. Oh yes, I'm... Yeah, but you're not. And we see that worked out in so many ways around us, don't we, to this very day. The way that Judas fell into that, we see people falling into it today. The biggest threat to the church is not those who betray Jesus with a raised fist. The biggest threat to God and his cause and his kingdom, the biggest threat to us, the biggest threat for us, is that we might fall into betraying him with a kiss because we've made a range of these mistakes commit to church, not Christ, commit to Christ but only in part that suits us, commit to Christ but not to following him, which is what being committed to him means, 
commit to Christ but not his people because it's the people that he's drawing together he is the eternal plan and purpose of God commit to Christ but being unwilling to take him at his word the way he took his father at his word God forbid that we find ourselves in that position Judas's lot was very serious his end was tragic God forbid that we should ever be in a position ourselves where we betray the Lord with a kiss.